Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cover the following topics. If they are familiar to you, please skip the video to the questions, answer them, put your answer in the comments section below. If they are not, just join my class. Alkanes are hydrocarbons where all the carbon atoms are joined with a single covalent bond. They have a general formula of Cn H to N plus 2. When we have one carbon atom, we call it methane. When we have two carbon atoms, it's called ethane. And we can draw it like this. And by the way, these names you should memorize since we're going to use the same prefix for other organic compounds. Alkane with three carbon atoms, it's called propane and can be drawn like this. Alkane with four carbon atoms, it's called butane and can be drawn like this. An alkane with five carbon atoms, it's called pentane. We draw it like this. Alkane with six carbon atoms, it's called hexane. Seven carbon atoms. It's called heptane. Eight carbon atoms. It's called octane. Nine carbon atoms. It's called nonane. And ten carbon atoms. It's called decane. And as I told you, you have to memorize these names and relate them to the number of carbon atoms. Like one carbon atom, methane, two ethane, three propane. 4 butane, 5 pentane, 6 hexane, 7 heptane, 8 octane, 9 nonane, and 10 decane. We are going to use these prefixes with all the other organic compounds. And that was regarding straight chains. What about branched chains? I'll explain in a while. Please, if you still don't know how to differentiate between straight and branched chains, watch my previous video. I'll keep a link for it in the description below. To name branch chain alkanes, I'm going to use IUPAC rules. I will keep a link in the description for an article talking about IUPAC naming in details. I'm going to summarize these rules as follows. Circle the longest chain, then name the substituents or the groups, number the carbon atoms, and then name the whole compound. And let's apply these rules on the following example. Please make sure to apply the first rule properly because if you do a mistake in the first one, for sure I won't continue doing wrong. The longest chain is the maximum number of carbon atoms that I can join in sequence. If I do it like this, we have seven carbon atoms in sequence. Let me do it in another way, like this. It's going to be six carbon atoms in sequence. But if I do it this way, we're going to have eight carbon atoms in sequence so this is the longest chain I can have after identifying the longest chain we have to name the groups or the substituents that are coming out from that longest chain like here we have two carbon atoms coming out from that main chain we have to borrow their name from ethane since we have two carbon atoms and we end it with YL so the name of the group is going to be ethyl the third step is to number the carbon atoms and to number the carbon atoms, we have to start either from the left or from the right. If we start from the left, then the group is going to be at carbon 5. If we start from the right, then the group is going to be at carbon 4. So we start numbering from the right side to make the group at the least possible number. In the fourth step, we have to mention the number at which the group is located, then separate that number from its name by a hyphen, then we name the longest chain. Always we separate numbers from words by hyphens. We separate numbers from each other by commas. So here the name is going to be 4-ethyl octane. Ethyl, it's located at carbon 4 and the longest chain is octane. Let's have another example. As we can see here, the maximum number of carbon atoms that I can join in series is 6. The longest chain is 6 carbon atoms as hexane. Then we have two groups. As you can see, each one is made of one carbon atom. We have to borrow its name from methane. We end it with YL, so it's going to be called methyl. So we have here two methyls. We have to number the carbon atoms. We start from the left because if we start from the right, the two methyls are going to be at 
carbon 3 and carbon 5 but if we start from the left the two methods are going to be at carbon 2 and carbon 4 so we start numbering from the left side and then when we have two similar group we use the prefix di when we have three similar groups we use the prefix tri when we have four similar groups we use the prefix tetra and so on since we have here two similar groups which are methyls we're going to use di we mentioned the numbers at which they are located the first is located at carbon 2 the second is located at carbon 4 we separate the numbers from the words by a hyphen we write dimethyl and the longest chain is hexane let's have a third example where the groups are different here we have the longest chain is composed of seven carbon atoms and we have two groups one of them made of two carbon atoms in sequence it's called ethyl the other one is made of one carbon atom it's called methyl and when we start numbering the carbons we start from the left end since it's closer to the groups for the groups to have the lowest possible location or number and when we have two different groups we should start naming them according to their alphabetical order regardless of their location so we start naming the ethyl at carbon 4 then methyl at carbon 2 and the parent name is heptane don't forget that we separate the numbers from the words by hyphens so the name is going to be 4 ethyl 2 methyl heptane let's have another example but here we have a skeletal formula as i told in the first video that skeletal formula is drawn using segments each segment represents two carbon atoms joined together so here we have the maximum or the longest chain is made up of seven carbon atoms and we have two groups branched from that longest chain each one is made of one carbon atom so we have two methyls and we start numbering the carbon atoms from the end closer to the groups or the substituents the groups are located at carbons 3 and 4 we separate the numbers with commas and then we write dimethyl and the longest chain is heptane and now to check your understanding i want you to pause the video during the countdown copy the structure try to name it and then play the video again to check if your answer is true or not the answer is going to be displayed after the countdown is over And now you are ready to solve the end of video questions, please if you are not, repeat the video again, otherwise solve the questions, put your answer in the comments section, if you have any question that I didn't cover in the video, please share it with me in the comments section, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos, see you in other videos and good luck.